Welcome to Israel Now News. I'm Yochanan El Rome. And I'm Rebecca Rand. In our top story, Serbia and Kosovo have announced that they will establish embassies in the Israeli capital, Jerusalem. Kosovo is the first Muslim majority country to recognize Jerusalem, and President Donald Trump praised the move, saying another great day for peace in the Middle East. Kosovo and Israel have agreed to normalize ties and establish diplomatic relations. The American leader said he believes more Islamic and Arab nations will follow soon. The White House brokered a historic agreement between Serbia and Kosovo, and as part of that accord, both Belgrade and Pristina are expected to establish embassies in the Israeli capital within the year. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu welcomed the announcement and thanked his friend, President Alexander Vucic of Serbia, for his decision, and U.S. President Donald Trump for his contribution to the achievement. Serbia and Kosovo are not the only countries to recently recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital and announce the establishment of diplomatic missions here. Rebecca has more on that. Yes, Yochanan, just as President Trump predicted, other countries are following America's lead and are recognizing Jerusalem as the Israeli capital. Shortly after the United States relocated its embassy to the Holy City, Guatemala followed suit. Serbia and Kosovo just announced their move to the Israeli capital, and now the newly elected president of Malawi has vowed to make his country the first African nation to establish diplomatic offices in the Israeli capital. President-elect Lazarus Chakwera is an evangelical Christian who holds a Ph.D. in theology. He has been a longtime supporter of the Jewish state, which he visited as recently as last year. This move is being hailed as another victory for faith-based diplomacy. Israel's internal security service, Shin Bet, announced the arrest of an Arab Bedouin who was working with Hamas to plant a bomb at a busy highway intersection. The man and nine of his family members were detained by authorities for a series of security offenses, including conspiring to plant explosives. The accused was considered a prime candidate for Hamas recruitment, because he holds Israeli citizenship and is able to travel freely across the border with Gaza. He was tasked with gathering intelligence, including filming the locations of bus stops near IDF bases, recording the movement of Israeli military planes, and noting the location of Israel's Iron Dome missile defense batteries stationed along the Gaza border. A senior Israeli security official said, this is further evidence of Hamas's efforts to establish a terrorist infrastructure in Israel as part of its systematic and extensive campaign against the Jewish state. The Islamic Waqf, which controls the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, is systematically destroying Jewish history at the site. The Muslim religious authority, which heavily restricts Christian and Jewish visitors, is notorious for destroying thousands of years of history by illegally digging on Mount Moriah. The most publicized case was in 1999 when the walk used bulldozers to dig up the ancient site and dump more than 9,000 tons of earth from the Temple Mount into the Kidron Valley. It continues to illegally destroy artifacts on the Temple Mount unchecked. Recently, a cavern opened up near the Mugrabi Gate, but Waqf authorities quickly filled the tunnel with cement before Israeli archaeologists could investigate. This act likely destroyed numerous layers of history that lies within the ancient holy site where both Jewish temples once stood. The White House has announced it is sanctioning the chief prosecutor of the International Criminal Court in The Hague for her biased and unfounded accusations against the United States and Israel. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo announced that Fatou Bensouda and the court's head of jurisdiction will face sanctions, which include freezing their U.S. assets. ICC members seeking to investigate allegations of alleged U.S. war crimes in Afghanistan have already had their travel visas revoked, but the judicial body in the Netherlands continues to falsely accuse America and Israel of war crimes. The Knesset has expressed concern that the bias in the court could lead to the issuing of global arrest warrants for IDF soldiers, current and former Israeli officials, and military personnel. Jerusalem has argued that the ICC has no jurisdiction in Israel and that the investigations are one-sided and extremely biased against the Jewish state. Another stash of ammonium nitrate has been discovered near the port of Beirut. One month ago, a stockpile of 2,750 tons of the highly combustible substance ignited and devastated the Lebanese capital and its seaport.
French and Italian volunteers working among the remains and rubble have identified more than 20 containers of hazardous chemicals, including another four tons of ammonium nitrate. The Iranian proxy army Hezbollah, which controls Lebanon, is notorious for using these exact chemicals in terror attacks around the globe. In fact, before the blast, the group's leader, Hassan Nasrallah, recorded a video threatening to use ammonium nitrate on Israel's Haifa port to spark another major conflict with the Jewish state. Israel's defense minister, Benny Gantz, has issued a seizure order for Hamas property and funds as part of an economic campaign to cripple the terror group. This Israeli offensive is a joint operation by the National Bureau for Counterterrorism Financing and the Defense Ministry, Israel's internal security agency Shin Bet, the IDF, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Gantz explained, we will continue to act against terror in every way, everywhere. A group of Israeli doctors at Sheba Medical Center in Tel Shomer are planning a clinical trial which calls for the use of radiation therapy on COVID-19 patients. Professor Zvi Simon of Sheba's Radiation Oncology Department told the Jerusalem Post that 70 years ago, low-dose radiation therapy was used to treat pneumonia. The trial will include 30 hospitalized COVID-19 patients suffering from severe acute respiratory syndrome and pneumonia. Some patients in Israel have already received low-dose radiation therapy in line with compassionate care protocols. And Professor Simon said that the results of this treatment showed drastic improvement. A respected human rights watchdog organization is accusing Iran of torturing protesters. Amnesty International claims Tehran is using waterboarding, beatings, electric shocks, pepper spray, and mock executions to extract false confessions. The group estimates that more than 7,000 protesters critical of the hardline Islamic Republic were rounded up and arrested over the last year. Many of them were children as young as 10 years of age. The report comes as the international community has decried the upcoming execution of decorated Iranian wrestler and national hero Navid Afkari. The athlete participated in national demonstrations in 2019 protesting the regime's political and economic corruption. He was arrested, tortured, and given two death sentences. Numerous world leaders, including President Trump, have appealed on Afkari's behalf and have urged Tehran to overturn the death sentence. The archaeological community was abuzz last week after the discovery of three royal capitals from the Davidic dynasty in Jerusalem. During a routine excavation of the ridge in the Amona Natsiv neighborhood, archaeologists uncovered the remains of a royal estate along with three pillar tops from the first temple period. The stones are engraved with a symbol linked to the Davidic dynasty and have been dated to the 7th century BCE between the rule of King Hezekiah and the destruction of Jerusalem by the Babylonians. This image is so significant that it was minted on the Israeli five-shekel coin after an identical royal capital was discovered in excavations of the city of David in the 1960s. Israeli professor Noam Elias is the first non-American to become a senior member of the National Academy of Inventors. Elias, a professor of material science and engineering at Tel Aviv University, is a pioneer in the field of 3D printing. The National Academy of Inventors recognized Elias for his technologies that have brought or aspire to bring real impact on the welfare of society and contributions to the innovation ecosystem. Israel's beloved Sea of Galilee is the fullest it's been in September in 27 years. Lake Kinneret is Israel's only source of fresh water and is adored by the residents of the Jewish state. The Water Authority announced that despite an intense late summer heat wave, the lake is currently at its highest level in September since 1993. The African nation of Madagascar has initiated the formation of an Israel Allies Caucus in its parliament. This new caucus will join the international network of 44 Israel Allies Caucuses, which work to encourage pro-Israel legislation and fight the boycott, divest, and sanction Israel movement. Josh Reinstein, the president of the Israel Allies Foundation, said support for Israel in Africa is steadily strengthening thanks to the work of many African Parliamentary Israel Allies caucuses. There are now over a thousand members of parliament under the IAF umbrella, each determined to translate their biblical support for Israel into real political action.
We are living in mysterious yet miraculous times. We've witnessed the most remarkable fulfillment of biblical prophecy, the Jewish people's return to Israel, and the prosperity and contributions of this tiny country in such a short time. Yet we've also seen an unexpected rise in anti-Semitism, which takes the form of anti-Zionism and alliances between groups that are fighting against the most fundamental biblical values. In the book, Titus, Trump, and the Triumph of Israel, Josh Reinstein answers important questions to clarify what has driven political action from the time that the Roman Emperor Titus destroyed Jerusalem until today, when President Trump recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Get your copy today and learn how faith-based diplomacy has changed the world. To order your advanced copy, go to triumphofisrael.com. That concludes the news portion of our show. Stay tuned for Ask the Source with Josh Reinstein. Hello and welcome to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein, and we're here in our beautiful studio in Jerusalem. My guest today is Toby Love. She's the founder of Share Love International. Toby, thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure being here. Toby, tell our viewers a little about what is Share Love International. Well, Share Love International is my initiative, which was born out of a necessity that I felt um, um, I could bring something different um, to diplomacy of today's age. Um, it's basically me going forward with my story and through my story and my journey, helping to bring partnership between Israel and Africa and Israel and the Christian community um, in the world. Your story is actually very unique. You came from Nigeria and you were the first female officer in the Israeli Defense Forces. What was that like? Well, that was an incredible honor, honor for me because, first of all, the precedence itself of being the first female Nigerian officer who would have guessed, you know, in such a small nation to become something like that, but more than that, it allowed me to understand that there are things that I can do, there are bridges that I can build, there are um, thresholds that I can pass. And ever since then, I have been trying to break other thresholds in, in different things that I do. And um, actually, there's a, there's a very good reason why um, I came to Israel, but I'm sure we're going to get to that. Go into it. Let's hear. What was the what was the reason that brought you here? Well, I made Aliyah about ten years ago, um, and that was propelled by two things. One was my dad. He's a Zionist, and he moved to Nigeria about thirty years ago um, for business. But throughout my childhood, he always told me, and he always wanted that I would join the army. That I would join the IDF, the Israel Defense Forces, and so I honored what his wish. But the Aliyah factor, the coming to Israel, was actually something that was born out of a wish that came from my mom. You see, my mom is a Christian uh, evangelical, and she always had such a deep love for Israel. And I realized that one of the best ways that I can show my love to Israel was to come here to make Aliyah and to sort of give up my childhood, you know, for, for a nation, for a country, for a state. and. Ever since I've done that, it's one of been the best decisions of my life. And I always tell people around the world, if you're not able to make Aliyah, you know, for all sorts of reasons, keep helping Israel, you know, praying for Israel, donating to Israel, you know, polit you know being friends of Israel politically and diplomatically. You've done just that. Uh, you've uh, described yourself as the unofficial ambassador to Africa and vice versa. Yes. How are you making the case for Israel around the world? Well, you see, what I'm doing is showing people around the world a new face to Israel. When you talk about Israel, and it's, it's only natural because it's something that has been thrown in the media for years and years. When you mention Israel in any place, you have somewhat of a typical um, picture of what it should look like. And I'm coming here and I'm breaking that and I'm saying no. I'm also a face of Israel. I'm a young woman. I've done the army, which is something that is um, um, obliged for young people in this um, state to do. And I do, I have my degrees and I'm very well educated and I'm a Zionist. 
and I'm here to help to bridge relations because this is what Israel is always trying to do. It goes out to the world, you know. You've uh, coined the phrase millennial diplomacy. Tell us a little bit about that concept. Well, I call myself a millennial diplomat um, because I think and this is me being a little bit far-fetched, but I think and I feel sometimes that the traditional way of diplomacy is somewhat stuck. And there is a lot of there are a lot of audiences out there, the youth, especially the youth, that are not being reached over across. They they might know what's happening in Israel, but they don't know it up close. And so when I termed the, the term when I coined the term millennial diplomacy, I was reaching for just that, the youth, getting over to the youth, speaking their language you know, transforming, you know, transmitting the messages that they would understand in a way that they would understand, you know, for the advantage of Israel. Yeah, you hear a lot about in the news today about Black Lives Matter, but actually in Nigeria where you're from, Christians are slaughtered at crazy levels, tens of thousands sometimes, just for the fact that they're Christian. Why isn't the international media focusing on the plight of black people in Nigeria? Well, you know what, why isn't the world focusing on Christians and black people all over the world. It's not just in Nigeria. And I would hope that because that is a world problem, it's literally a world problem, that there will be much more of a wa uh, more awakening. But I see that that's in most cases not the, not the case. But what I have found that is that there is more of an awareness because of the media. So these are things that people may have not been aware of before. Just the fact that me and you are speaking of it now, it's going to have its ripple effect. But Thanks to the media, things are being, you know, out and people are getting more awareness. And I think just from that awareness, the next steps will be built. Because if you're not given, you know, informative information, people wouldn't know, wouldn't even know about it and they wouldn't be able to take the right steps. Now, before the coronavirus uh, pandemic, you were going around the world speaking mostly to Christian audiences. And still today, you do it through uh, Skype and Zoom and, and different uh, methods. Why is it important for you to get your message out to the Christian audience? Growing up in a Christian home, I understand that unconditional love that Christians have for Israel. And many of the times, um, this, this is not being um, uh, taken into you know, all the, wi the wider scope. It's important for me to take my story across the world so that people, again, see a face of Israel. I will call it a new face to Israel, new face to diplomacy and hear me speak. Because when people hear me speak, they say, oh, we were not aware you know, of that. And I think that changes the mindset. We're talking about changing the mindsets. And I think that's one of the good ways of you know, making changes in the world today. So yes, it is important for me to do that um, today. And it's a complete initiative just by me and by myself, run by me by myself. And I completely enjoy it. I think it's a shlichut, which is uh, you know, something that I was born to do. Well, we see in uh, Africa today that Christian countries are rallying behind Israel. We see more support out of Africa than ever before. Our prime minister went there twice uh, for, uh, in the last two years, which is a big deal since no prime minister has been there in 50 years. What's the future of Israel-Africa relations? I would hope that the future would continue be, will be to continue these relationships, you know, bring them to the table bring the African nations to the table, because these are very powerful um, um, partners, powerful people to have, you know, a connection with. If it's philanthropists and Christian leaders or, you know, simple congregations who pray for Israel, these are power players. And the more that Israel awakens to that fact, the better for it. Toby, there are literally tens of millions of people watching this show. What message do you have for our viewing audience? Well, I would just have to say, and I would like to appeal to Christians and Jewish communities around the world. I would especially like to appeal to the youth. You have so much power to make such a difference. When I was 16, I made the option, I made the choice of coming to Israel and making Aliyah and serving in the IDF. And that was just a small piece of what I could do. You can do so much more. And so I appeal to you, get in contact with me. There's so many ways that you can do this. And together, we're gonna make Israel strong and keep it strong, and that's it. Thank you, Toby, for being on the show, and thank you for tuning in to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein. Now back to the studio. Up next, the return to Zion with Karen Hayasod.
Shalom and welcome to the Return to Zion with Karen Hayesod, United Israel Appeal. I'm Sam Grunwerk, World Chairman of Karen Hayesod, the leading official fundraising organization for the State of Israel. After 2,000 years, we found the descendants of the lost tribe of Dan. Please help us welcome our brothers and sisters back home. God bless you from Jerusalem. He will raise a banner for the nations and gather the exiles of Israel. He will assemble the scattered people of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Isaiah 11.12 Christians and Jews have been bearing witness to the miraculous fulfillment of biblical prophecy. Since the reestablishment of the State of Israel in 1948, the ingathering of the Jewish people to the Holy Land has unfolded before our very eyes. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Isaiah 43.5 Today, Karen Haisod has been tasked with completing one of the greatest examples of the fulfillment of this prophecy, the Aliyah of the Ethiopian Jews, the descendants of the tribe of Dan. On October 29, 2012, we were able to bring 250 new immigrants from Ethiopia to Israel. Karen Haisod is not only tasked with paying the costs of their flights and accommodations, but also with their absorption into Israeli society. There are still around 2,000 Ethiopian Jews who pray daily to come back to the land of Israel, and we need your help to bring them home. We are reaching out to our Christian brothers and sisters and asking you to join us. In this new century, as in the old, Christians must reach out to the Jewish people and do their part to advance the fulfillment of the prophecy and defend the covenant. Help us bring the children of Israel back to the land of Israel. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. Genesis 12.3 בכל פעם שנפרדנו, הייתי אומר לכם שיגיע הרגע וניפגש בארץ ישראל. אחי ואחיותיי, הרגע הגיע. מעומק ליבי אני מאחל לכם ברוכים הבאים למולדת. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, we're expecting a massive wave of Aliyah from Jewish communities all around the world. Help us bring them home, and let's bless Israel together. To donate and get information, visit khisrael.org. The biblical prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. The people of Israel are returning to the Promised Land after 2,000 years of exile. But millions of Jews are still longing to come home. Bless Israel by supporting Karen Hayasod United Israel Appeal, the leading official fundraising organization for the State of Israel. Together, we can fulfill the prophecy of the Bible. Let's bless Israel together. To donate and get information, visit khisrael.org. Two years ago, I visited Oman. One year ago, I visited Chad. Half a year ago, I met with the leader of Sudan. And these are few of the publicized steps there are many more unpublicized meetings with Arab and Muslim leaders who recognize that their true interests are to normalize relations with the State of Israel. 
Of course, these uh, positive developments are not welcomed by everyone. While we seek progress and modernity, the tyrants of Tehran want to take us back to a dark age of theocratic medievalism. And if this murderous terrorist regime ever developed nuclear weapons or the means to develop it, they would promptly scuttle the peace and they would endanger the entire world. We must not let that happen. And we will not let that happen. I want to commend President Trump for standing up firmly to Iran, for abandoning the flawed and uh, dangerous JCPOA, for taking out such master terrorists as Qasem Soleimani, for triggering, triggering the snapback sanctions at the United Nations. And I will be discussing these matters and more with National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien. In opposing Iran's war machine, the United States is showing true global leadership. I note with satisfaction that, like Israel, countries of the Gulf Cooperation Council are now openly, and I stress the word openly, supporting the American position. They quietly and discreetly uh, supported the opposition to the JCPOA, but now they've come out and openly supported the American position, and this reflects a change in the making. I call upon all countries to get behind the United States in confronting Iranian aggression. I want to thank each of you for your hard work. I want to thank President Trump for his steadfast friendship and support. Our common goals of peace, prosperity, and security are at hand. And as we stand against the purveyors of terror and aggression, we also stand ready to till the fields of peace and bring its bountiful fruits to our people and to our entire international community, to the world. Thank you. Lift up your eyes and look around. All your children gather and come to you. The biblical prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. The people of Israel are returning to the promised land after 2,000 years of exile. But millions of Jews are still longing to come home. Anti-Semitism threatens many of the Jews. We must rescue them before the window of opportunity slams shut. Bless Israel by supporting Karen Hayasod United Israel Appeal, the leading official fundraising organization for the state of Israel. Together, we can fulfill the prophecy of the Bible. Let's bless Israel together. To donate and get information, visit our website at www.khisrael.org. That's all for this edition of Israel Now News. I'm Yochanan El Rom. And I'm Rebecca Rand, reporting from our studio in Jerusalem. Please join us next week for all of your Israel updates.